One of the things that got me really interested in your project was when I first saw, it was one of the GIFs, I think, where you you were, like, attaching a rocket to one of the zombie people. And I was like, whoa, I, you know, because of that, I've had that experience with a lot of VR content where, yeah, the, the, le the depth of interaction is quite shallow, yes. right? And I feel like that's something that you're, you're maybe doing differently. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to let player interact, interact with the game like, imagine if there's a video game that you're inside, it's not real world. It is a video game, but you're inside it not in the normal terms of being in a video game where it's a shooter, a uh, third person, or like a top-down. You're inside it fully. You're immersed in it. It's not immersive as if, like, super realistic. It's immersive as if you are immersed in the game. You are a part of it. You can... Things that are in VR, they don't exist. They don't have weight. They don't have texture and they don't have structure. You can, you can put your head inside an object. You can put an ob You can pick up everything, and you cannot, you cannot disallow player to do that because the, co the controllers have their own weight and they're not gonna have any more of that. Uh, so what I want to do that is to embrace it and let the player feel like they're in a video game, but they're in charge of it because they're not just playing it. They're inside it. They're, they can do all the video game things, but with their hands, not with mouse and keyboard. Uh, so one of the problems that I had is that I use, Uni I use Unity PhysX, uh, which is amazingly fast and uh, really, really solid for what I'm doing. Uh, but some things in VR are against the laws of physics just because things don't exist. So for example, I can grab a car in one arm and lift it, that's okay. When I let it go, it will just fall. When I throw it, it will fly away. But what if I pick another car in another hand and then I can slam them together? So if they're solid, they're gonna glitch out. If they're not, they're just gonna come into each other. Uh, but, if, but if they come into each other, they're inside, the colliders are colliding, and I let go of one, it's gonna a either shoot one in a really big force because it's the initial force is gonna be really high, so it's gonna just disappear over the horizon. Uh, or if I keep them too long and they're uh, they are still solid, they're just gonna keep glitching. So I tr try to solve that. When I let go, they just stay together. Mm. I just stage one to another using a joint. Uh, funny thing about fixed joints is that when when I connect things to each other and then I wiggle them, they, they have this wiggly motion because each of the joint uh, is applied a f uh, at, l at a late frame update. So it's like every single joint is a frame late, which makes a really long contraption wobbly, which has this really nice effect to it. Uh, and then suddenly I had crafting by fixing a bug that, I, that was pretty much the only way to fix it. Uh, so I was like, how about I add rockets? How about I add like, an engine that turns? Now you can make like a rocket helicopter. You can attach yourself to it if you're like if you're bold enough, and you can fly away to outer space as well. Uh, and that opens like when you when you have like a bunch of different things like motors, joints, uh, moving joints, and stuff like that. You can create exponentially more difficult things in VR, especially that things don't weigh anything. So you can take like a lamppost and create a helicopter out of it. You can take some old fans and build a house out of it. You can make the fi house fly or ride around. You can connect humans to things and to other humans, like gluing the foot to the head or connecting like uh, a human to another human or like connecting a human to a washing machine and then turning it on. It's like sometimes I feel really like a real mad scientist that really it's... it's I just look at these guys and I, I, it's it's sad. I, I, <laughs> they're having a hard time with me for two years now. I like I did terrible things to them. <laughs> that's amazing. So I th I think that's super super interesting, and I really am interested in this thought of what does it mean to interact in VR and like what are the because, yeah, you don't have collision, right? The controllers are not going to stop moving when you bang two things together. And what is that? How, what feels natural? You know, like, what does the brain expect? You know, how, or how do you, how do you kind of create uh, interaction in VR in a way that's meaningful? And that's a super interesting um, process that you, you explained there. I think one thing 
that I thought I think is really interesting in what you said is this idea of immersion, realism, and then kind of video game aesthetics, right? Because the aesthetic of the game is quite unique in that it, it very much embraces its kind of video game-ness and its kind of 3D art that's not trying to look realistic, but there is kind of some immersion. I, I think that it's really good to let people do things in video games, and especially in VR, uh, in VR things, let them do things that they wouldn't be able to do in real life. Uh, let them do something new, but you want to, you want it to be relatable. So it's something familiar that you know. Uh, in my example, it's a city that I've been building for way too long in this game. Uh, but I ended up with a city that's around like, I think, 500 by 500 meters across, uh, populating it with things. This is a really tedious job because you have to plant every single piece of garbage on the floor. You have to plant the traffic signals, make them work, put the roads together. I even had, uh, I, I built a tool where I have a supermarket and I would uh, put things on the shelves by hand just so that they look natural, like just not really, not aligned, but a bit, everything is a bit misaligned. Uh, it looks really natural. Uh, but then you want also, uh, so you have these things that are relatable and then you have these things that are alien. So for example, Everybody knows a city, how a city looks like, but people don't really launch zombies into outer space, which is a really cool to, thing to do with the things you can find in a city. And, and then that post, that, that kind of created some trouble because VR needs to be smooth, needs to be 90 FPS, and a city this big has a lot of things. I really want people to be able to explore and po have the city populated with a lot of things they can find, they can build with them, they can use them, they can use them to create or they can just destroy them because it's fun to destroy things. It's this kind of like you build a Lego sc sculpture that is this really nice building and then you smash it and smashing it is so much fun but when you smash it you have to build it again. Not in video games. In video games you can build something, smash it and then just load the save smash it again and load the save and you can smash it yet again so that's what I'm aiming at uh, having that but needing to have that I need to build that thing that you can actually smash uh, so that posed the problem because uh, VR things need to be smooth need to be 19 FPS and that's a lot of things on the scene uh, so I I was doing most recently just before coming here to DC I was doing optimizations so the first thing I do, did is this kind of BSP if you remember like uh, old Quake engines they had this BSP kind of thing so basically you are in one district and the districts are built so that they kind of obscure they, you can see a lot of it but they obscure like the lower if you obscure the lower part uh, you can call all the tiny objects and then as uh, then you can see far away because you can see all the tall buildings and the trees but you can uh, you cannot render and disable all the uh, tiny things in the uh, in different districts so the entire city with the traffic and the buildings is rendered all of the time uh, of course with occlusion unity occlusion cooling which works very well, very well in in city kind of environment uh, but the tiny things are disabled per where you are. Plus, additionally, uh, I cool for the uh, for the frosted. Uh, I keep a list of the things that are actually enabled and physical. Everything that is not has been touched uh, is a non-kinematic rigid body. Uh, it is a kinematic rigid body, so it doesn't move until you interact with it or another object interacts with it. So the physics skip all of these objects. Uh, they only do collision, which is like they don't collide with each other, they only collide with the things that move, that makes things fast. And when they start moving, I will cool anything that you don't see. I will basically keep a list of it, iterate it every frame, and disable things that are out of your frost room. Uh, so what that ends up doing, one, things are really fast because the disabled game objects, they don't even affect the physics because the rigid body, the transform, the ga entire game object is disabled. And two, you don't get to miss anything. It's, uh, it is a problem in VR games that you get to miss the cool stuff because it's happening on the side of, or behind. But in, in this game, where you look away, you, like, you can attach a rocket to a man's head and then let it go and fly off. And it flies off from your view. 
and then you turn around and it's still there flying because it has been disabled when you're not seeing it. Uh, so it creates kind of this. Uh, you you think that it creates awkward moments that you like this thing shouldn't happen, but it's actually really cool that you don't get to miss anything cool happening behind your back. And then also like when the when the weird zombie humans when they come at you, they will not come at you from behind, which is like uh, is a thing that FPS things do. Like nobody gonna shoot you in the back in a single player mode of FPS because that would suck. Like why why is the person shooting me and I didn't even see it. Uh, so it's like optimization plus uh, having having a thing that makes I think it makes the experience more more whole.